here's another example of how to work with complex fractions, or what I would like to call complicated fractions. Notice that in the numerator, we have two fractions, and in the denominator, we have two fractions. And in each of those fractions, we have, of course, a denominator. So we have an x and a y there. We have an x times y and a y there. And in order to simplify this, or to make it uh, right in, a, in the simplest form, the way I recommend you do this is to look at all those denominators that I circled and find the lowest common denominator. So in this case, what would you say is the lowest common denominator? Well, we have an x and a y and an x times y, so x times y wins out. Notice that in each case, each denominator fits evenly into that denominator, so x times y is the lowest common denominator, which means I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by that lowest common denominator. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by x times y, and I'm going to multiply the denominator times x times y. Of course, I'm going to multiply this times this fraction, this times this fraction, I'm going to multiply this times this fraction, and this times this fraction. All right. When I multiply x times y times 3 over x, the x's will cancel out, and I'm left with a 3y. Minus, when I multiply this times this, the y's will cancel out, and I'm left with a 1 times x, or x. In the denominator, when I multiply these two out, this times this, both x and the y cancels out, and I'm left with simply a 2. And here, when I multiply this times this, the y's will cancel out, and I'm left with a 3 times x. Don't forget the minus, so minus 3x. And then, uh, we would want to simplify that if possible, but it looks like I cannot factor anything out, so that would be the final and simplest form of this particular problem. Okay, I think you probably want to see a couple more examples because these tend to be rather confusing, so let me show you a few more. 